Hello, we continue our discussion of separation of variables in second order PDEs in two dimensions. We start discussing a new topic which is called sturm liouville systems. Since sturm liouville systems appear as generalization of this, what we did in case of the heat equation and the wave equation, let us recall our results from the last two lectures. We considered the heat equation or the wave equation and we looked for its for their solutions in terms of a function u, which is a product, function of x and a function of t, and we wanted that the solution was not equal to zero. And then we when we inserted this postulate of the solution into the PDE, in the case of heat equation we obtained this, and this was supposed to be equal to a constant minus lambda. Likewise here we obtained this and we observed that there was a particular second order ODE which function x should satisfy and this second order ODE was was the same in the both cases and it was x double prime plus lambda x is equal to zero. And now when we imposed a boundary condition here as or here. We observe that this ODE should satisfy boundary condition on one side it was x of 0 is equal x of L is equal 0 and here in the case of the wave equation we got that x prime of 0 was supposed to be x prime of L and was equal to zero. So we have shown that in the case of heat equation or in the case of wave equation, the postulate of having a solution in terms of separation of variables, we end up with boundary value problem for a certain linear ODE in which there's a parameter lambda appearing. And this boundary value problem is such that either the solution x should satisfy this or that. So the problem of separation of variables for the heat equation or the wave equation with boundary conditions results in a problem of finding a solution to a linear ODE enumerated by a constant parameter lambda with appropriate boundary conditions. Now, we have shown that because of the boundary conditions, this parameter lambda can be only, can only assume uh, certain values, namely there was a number n which parameterized this parameters lambda and it, in both cases it was something like n square pi square divided by l squared where here n was running from 0 and here n was running from 1 and to each such lambda n there corresponded a solution xn which was here sine and pi divided by Lx, whereas here it was xn cosine and pi divided by Lx. These solutions were called eigenfunctions. Corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda n of the ODE. So the ODE that we, are, we, we have here is an ODE for eigenfunctions of a given problem, either this one or that one. Okay. What was interesting about these solutions, these eigenfunctions, was that the set 
set of all of these xn's when n runs through the all possible values is an orthogonal set of functions with respect to inner product that we have two functions f g the inner product is just integral from 0 to l of f of x uh, g of x dx and these eigenfunctions in both problems were orthogonal in the sense that inner product of xn with xm which was just integral from 0 to l of xn of x is xm of x dx was equal 0 always when n was not equal to n. The important thing about having such system of functions which are orthogonal was that according to Fourier we could have written any function of t and x as a infinite sum over n's with coefficients a n which depend on t of this x n of x where these coefficients a n of t could be calculated as integral from 0 to l of f of t x x n of x dx divided by the norm of x n's which is just square root of integral from 0 to l x n squared of x dx okay so that's what we did for the heat equation and for the wave equation and now we want to generalize this procedure for more general parabolic PDEs or hyperbolic PDEs. Generalization of our results about heat equation and about wave equation is due to two mathematicians from 1800s. Actually, the result is from 1834. And the first one was French Swiss mathematician Jacques Francois Charles Sturm. So, this Swiss French mathematician and Joseph Cuville. That's French. So, in this generalization, we are given a number of functions and number of constants. So first functions, we have given function p of x, q of x, and r of x, such that p, p prime, q, and r are continuous functions on an interval a, b, and they are such that p of x and q of x is greater than zero for all x belonging to a and b. We are also given function of, it, of t, m of t, such that it's again continuous function, but now from zero to infinity. And we also assume that this function is greater than zero for all t's greater than equal zero. We also have constants. Let's call them alpha, beta, 
gamma delta and we want we want that these constants are such that alpha plus beta is always greater than zero and gamma plus delta modulus is always greater than zero which is a fancy way of saying that alpha and beta cannot simultaneously vanish as well that gamma and delta cannot simultaneously vanish okay so now we'll be generalizing either the heat equation problem and remember heat equation was parabolic so there will be parabolic generalization of the heat equation and there will be and the wave equation was hyperbolic so there will be hyperbolic generalization and in the parabolic case we'll be considering the following PDE for unknown u and in the hyperbolic case we'll be considering the following PDE where P, Q, R and M are these functions that we defined above so we will have this PDE or this PDE to be solved and we want to find a solution for a function u, u of x of t such that uh, it is valid for x between a and b and all t is greater than zero right so why we consider this particular PDEs? Well, because it turns out that for these PDEs we can separate variables x and t similarly like we did in the heat equation and like we did in the wave equation. So why these equations? Because when we look for a solution of the form x of x t of t where we insist that this solution is not vanishing then an insertion of this kind of solution to this equation or to this equation will give us a system of two ODEs in the first case it will be just ODE of the system like m dot t equals p x prime prime plus q of x divided by r of x and in the second case it will be just m t double dot t is equal p of x prime prime plus q of x r of x saying it differently inserting this in this equation or in this equation and dividing the result by capital X and capital T we will obtain either this or that and now why these these two equations are that nice because when we just look at our definitions of function p, q, r and m you will see that here on the left hand side we have only function of t and here on the right hand side we have only functions of x likewise here we have only function of t and here we have only functions of x so therefore this must be equal to a constant which we call negative lambda as in our heat equation or wave equation case and now we can see that this is a solution to this or that provided that functions x and t satisfy ODEs so the first ODE in the parabolic case is m t dot plus lambda t is equal to zero Whereas here it is the equation m t double dot plus lambda t is equal to zero. Whereas in both cases we have the same equation for the function x, which looks like p x prime 
prime plus q x plus lambda r x equals zero. Okay. So summarizing, if we have a PDE like this or PDE like this, then it has solutions in terms of a product of function of x and of function of t, provided that in the parabolic case function of t satisfies this equation and the hyperbolic case function of t satisfies these equations, whereas in both cases the function x satisfies the same equation which is here. Now, to generalize this what we are doing in, in the case of heat equation or the wave equation, we need boundary conditions. And in both cases, parabolic and hyperbolic, we just now want that a function u, which is a solution to this problem or to this problem, should satisfy the following boundary conditions. Alpha of u at a at t plus beta of u sub x at a at t must be equal to zero and gamma of u b of t plus delta of u sub x of b of t must be zero for all t for all t's greater than zero greater than equal zero right And now if we just impose these boundary conditions, we will see that they don't affect functions capital T, but they give conditions for function capital X at the boundary. So in our postulated solution, this gives conditions for function capital X at the boundary A and B, which are and Remember this alpha, beta, gamma, delta were constants such that alpha and beta don't vanish simultaneously and also gamma and delta don't vanish simultaneously. So summarizing, if we postulate a solution to our parabolic or hyperbolic problem in terms of a product of function of x and function of t, then function of x should satisfy a certain second order ODE and because of boundary conditions imposed on u should also satisfy this boundary condition. So both of our problems, regardless they are parabolic or hyperbolic, imply a certain boundary value problem for a certain linear ODE of second order. And this system of equations that we have here is called Sturm Liouville system. It turns out that for the applications another boundary value problem is also important. This leads to the periodic sturm liouville systems. So now we want that p of x, q of x, and r of x are periodic functions of x on the entire interval a and b with period b minus a and we look for separation of variables for the solutions of pdes as before but now with the function capital x being periodic with period b minus a so now we want periodic boundary conditions meaning that the value of the function x at a is equal to the value of the function x at b as well 
the value of its derivative of a is equal to value of the derivative of the b. So what is periodic Stirling-Lewitt system? It's again a system obtained by separating variables either in this equation or in this equation, but now we want that the solution is periodic in x, so therefore the value of the function at a and b is the same and the value of its derivative at a and b is the same. Okay? So this is the setting of sturm liouville systems. And now let us make examples. So if we put function p to be equal constant and equal to 1, function q to be identically equal to 0, and function r to be equal to 1, and if we identify the ends a to be 0 and b to be l, then we can consider two cases. The case number one will have two subcases, the parabolic one and hyperbolic. So if we just in addition put that the function m of t is equal 1 over k, where k is positive constant, and if we put beta equal delta equal 0, we go back to our problem of the heat equation with a rod whose ends are in a thermal bus such that the ends have temperature equal to zero. This heat equation problem for a rod with two ends in a heat bus of temperature equal to zero. In the hyperbolic case, if we take function m of t to be constant, 1 over c squared, and if we put alpha equal gamma now equal to zero, then we come back to the situation of the wave equation, which describes a string whose ends can freely move along the roads to which the string is attached. So this wave equation uh, for a string whose ends can freely slide along roads attached at x equal 0 and x equal L. Okay. So if we still keep this setting of p equal 1, q equal 0, r equal 1, and a equal 0, b equal L, then if we now assume periodic monetary conditions, then we are ending up with the Sturmilby problem for an ODE x double prime plus lambda x is equal to zero, but now is the boundary conditions x of zero equals x of L and x prime of zero is equal to x prime of L. This is the problem for ODEs that we didn't solve yet, so let's solve it now. So, it turns out that if lambda is smaller than zero, there are no solutions. One can check this. When lambda is equal to zero, then a solution is x zero equal one. So there's one dimensional space of solutions spanned by a solution x zero equal one. And eventually when lambda is greater than zero, then the general solution of this equation is x a cosine square root of lambda x plus b sine square root of lambda x. But now if we impose the 
boundary conditions will have that a must be equal a cosine square root of lambda l plus b sine square root of lambda l so this value of x at 0 and this is the value of x at l and now we have to do the same for the, the, the time derivatives and then we get that square root of lambda b is equal negative a square root of lambda sine square root of lambda l plus b square root of lambda cosine square root of lambda l right so these are just this is a general solution of this equation and these are the boundary conditions these ones here and now if we just rearrange these conditions we, we can write it we can write them like this one minus cosine square root of lambda l a minus sine square root of lambda l b equals zero and here is sine square root of lambda l a plus one minus cosine square root of lambda l b equals zero because we could have uh, divide this thing by square root of lambda because we assume that we are in this situation that lambda is not equal to you. And now this system of equations for A and B is a system of linear homogeneous equations for A and B and therefore it has non-zero solution if the determinant of the matrix with coefficients like this, this, this and this is zero. So this this, this system for A and B has non-zero solution if and only if the determinant is zero and the determinant of this matrix is cosine square root of lambda L squared plus sine of square root of lambda L squared equals zero. So this is the determinant and for this to have non-zero solution for A and B, this determinant must be zero. So if we just simplify this equation, we will get that this is something like 2, 1 minus cosine square root of lambda L is equal to 0, which is the same as sine squared of square root of lambda L divided by 2 must be 0. And this means nothing else but that square root of lambda L divided by 2 must be equal n pi where n runs through natural numbers so therefore lambda must be equal to 4 n squared pi squared divided by l squared so it turns out that this problem has non-zero solution provided that this lambda which is positive is enumerated by a natural number n so the eigen value of this problem is for every n like this and now the corresponding solutions are xn equal a n cosine square root of lambda n which is just 2 n pi by l x plus b n sine of 2 n pi l times x. So now summarizing of this what we have here and here we see that the solution of this term liberal problem has the following properties. If n is equal 0 then we have one dimensional space of solutions to the Eigen function equation, which is just equal to this, and when n is running from 1 to 3, we now have that the space of xn for every n is spanned by two different functions, which is just sine of 2n pi divided by lx, or cosine 2n pi divided by lx. Okay, so in the sturm liouville problem with periodic boundary conditions 
to a given lambda, if the lambda is non equal to zero, there corresponds a two dimensional space of eigenfunctions. So there is degeneracy of solutions for non zero lambda. So we are now in a position of comparing three Sturm Lugel problems. The problems are for the same linear second order ODE but with different boundary conditions. Recall that in the Dirichlet case we had that x of 0 was equal x of L was equal 0. In the von Neumann case we had that x prime of 0 was equal x prime of L was equal 0. And in the periodic boundary condition case we had that x of 0 is equal x of L and x prime of 0 is equal x prime of L. And now in the Dirichlet case we determined that the eigenvalues must be quantized like this with n running from 1 through all the natural numbers and then that for every n there is a one dimensional space of solutions spanned by a function xn being sine of n pi divided by l x. So these were our xn's in this case. In the von Neumann case we also established that the eigenvalues must be quantized in the same way as in the case of Dirichlet, but now n runs from 0, 1, 2, 3 and all the other natural numbers. And now the space of solutions for every given n is spanned by functions which are cosine of n pi L x. So these were our accents in this case. The situation is quite different in case of periodic boundary conditions. Although here the eigenvalues are also quantized, but a bit differently. Lambda n now can be equal to 4 n squared pi squared by L squared, where n goes through non-negative integers. But it turns out that the vector space of eigenfunctions corresponding to a given n depends on this if n is equal to 0 or if n is a natural number. If n is equal to 0, the eigenspace corresponding to eigenfunctions corresponding to eigenvalue lambda equal to 0 is one dimensional and spanned by a solution x0 equal to 1. But when n is a natural number, so when n runs from 1, 2, 3, and so on, then there is a two-dimensional vector space of eigenfunctions, which is spanned by cosine 2n pi l x and sine 2n pi divided by l x. So in this case, the x n's for every n different than zero are linear combinations of cosines and sines, like this. So this gives a difference and shows that not only the E of the sturm liouville problem is important, but also mainly boundary conditions. In the Dirichlet problem we have this setting, in the von Neumann problem we have this setting, 
אני מדי פריודי פה, דווקא בשנת כרטיס סטי. 